Hey everyone. Um, today we are going to be looking at something known as diversification, and we're going to see its connection with risk. Okay, so there's a new word here, diversification. We'll talk about that, and it's very, very much connected with the word risk. So let's begin. Now, uh, my question to you is, what may be a reason for investors constructing portfolios? I mean, um, we've studied individual assets and their returns, and we've also studied um, something known as portfolios, which are a collection of assets to generate returns. My question is, what may be a reason for these investors to construct portfolios? Well, it's a very simple answer, okay? And the answer is to reduce risk, okay? That's what it is. It's to reduce risk, and I can get into more detail, but it might be um, outside of the scope, or we'll be doing it in the future. The best way to see it is that when you have a collection of assets, they they connect together in a way such that, they, such that they reduce risk. And we're going to talk a bit more about this today. So basically, as a portfolio's composition of different assets, such as shares, um, increases, overall risk will decrease. Okay, overall risk will decrease as the composition of different assets increases. Okay, so we can say that we can say that um, risk is inversely proportional to the number of assets. Okay, that's something we can say here. A uh, mathematical explanation here. Now, what we call this, what we call this concept right here, is the principle. The principle of diversification that's what we call it we call this whole thing of reducing risk through the portfolios as diversification and its definition the definition of this principle is constructing a portfolio to consist of a number of assets will eliminate some but not all of the risk so we apply the process, we apply the concept of diversification to eliminate, to reduce risk, but it's not going to be all of it, and we'll talk more about that um, later, okay? So let's continue on with diversification. All right, more on diversification. What we have is that diversification reduces risk. We know that much. But we also know that risk can be, in a way, um, categorized into two subsets, systematic and unsystematic, and we've covered this before. Now, there is something to, to say here. Diversification only reduces systematic risk. It does not reduce systematic risk. It only reduces unsystematic risk. It does not reduce systematic risk. So you have to remember that, okay? You have to remember that when I'm diversifying a portfolio, it's only going to reduce unsystematic risk and not systematic risk. And for these for these reasons, we like to use the word non-diversifiable interchangeably with systematic. And we like to use unsystematic um, with diversifiable risk. Okay, so this is something to to remember, something to memorize. Okay, but at the same time, I can offer some sort of understanding. Now, by definition, okay, by definition, and we'll start by explaining unsystematic first. By definition, unsystematic risk, okay, affects a small group of assets okay it's it's um risk which is subjected just to a company and furthermore to a small group of assets and for that reason we can construct we can strategize our portfolio in such a way so thus we can 
construct a portfolio so we can the composition of the portfolio we can arrange them in such a way to counter to counter any downfalls okay because some returns may experience a particular downfall but if we construct our portfolio in such a way i.e. diversify our portfolio we can counter these downfalls all right and so if i draw one of my bubbles right here and i split it into two to signify that my portfolio has um is composed of two different assets we'll put it this way let's say something in the economy causes the return of this asset to fall that same event may cause this this asset to produce greater than ordinary returns and they will counteract each other okay that's what we mean by diversifying and later on we're going to learn that we want the correlation the correlation between these two to be um, negative okay that's what we want to do negative or very 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 small and so that's the explanation for unsystematic risk systematic risk on the other hand so let's write systematic risk on the other hand sys systematic risk we learned that it affects all assets okay it's related to the market it's market risk so no matter what you do no matter what you compose your portfolio of every single asset here like let's say these two for example both of these are going to experience that risk okay both of them every possible asset in the market is going to be hit is going to be struck by this plague of systematic risk and there is no cure for it basically okay and so that's the reason why diversification reduces systematic risk but not systematic risk okay now what I'm going to do is draw um, show you a graph and we're going to do some drawing and we're going to show um, how diversification flows um, with the with with considering risk and the number of shares okay so on the x-axis we have the number of shares so number of shares will increase as we go towards the right and on the y-axis we have risk which will increase as we go upwards basically there is going to be a fixed there's going to be a fixed um, degree of risk a fixed degree of risk right here so there is never no risk okay uh, if our portfolio let's say just doesn't consist of oh no no okay forget about that um, no there is going to be some sort of set of risk present okay and as I explained before this is systematic this is systematic risk can't be avoided at all regardless of how many shares you have in this portfolio the principle the principle of diversification does not apply to systematic risk clearly but I'll get my other pen the black one and I'm going to show you that System, um, unsystematic risk will experience a reduction. So let's say we start at this point here. We start at this point here. We have unsystematic risk here. Okay? But as the number of shares increase, my unsystematic risk will decrease. And it will decrease asymptotically. Okay, asymptotically. That's not a very nice uh, curve. It's not nice and smooth. But I hope you get the point. As you see, when our shares, when the number of shares is small, I do have quite um, an identifiable degree of unsystematic risk. 
But as that our number of shares increase and increase and increase, our unsystematic risk will decrease so that it converges to a point where it's identifiable and all we left all we're left with is systematic risk okay so so that's the big thing to remember here all the big things to remember are that diversification is used to reduce system um, unsystematic risk Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.